Welcome to another broadcast of Light for the Journey, where we take a look at the world we journey through, this thing called life, in the light of the Holy Scriptures. <clears throat> I'm Pastor Carl Tenney, and I pastor the Oak Hills Wesleyan Church. You can see the logo right here. Um, the church is located at 41028th Street in Rochester, Minnesota, and it is cold here in Minnesota again today. You hear me say that a lot. So what I thought I would do um, before I got started is I thought, well, I'm going to put a background up that is from the fall. I uh, took this from, um, trying to think of the name of the community, Pine, Pine Valley, Pine... Um, well, it's just north of Rochester, but this is a brook that I was at, and I'll take my picture off here just so you can see it for a moment. Um, I like it. And uh, and uh, there are lots of pictures, photos like this on Tenny Productions, and I give those away on my side. I am a photographer on the side. I do some sideline work. So anyhow, I like that picture, and I thought it would be nice to remind us that it's not always cold. Anyhow... Um, glad, I'm glad that you're here, and if on Sunday you've got some free time around 10.30, uh, well, not around, we, uh, 10, at 10.30 um, Central Time, we worship together there at Oak Hills, and there are some neat ministries there. Also at, at 3.20, we have an international church that meets and uh, do, some, do some pretty fun things there as well. So, anyhow. Welcome to uh, this ministry. Um, this ministry is derived from Psalms 119.105, where your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Sometimes our path is um, around the water, but anyhow, this is, this is called life, right? And sometimes it's pleasant, isn't it? Uh, Life for the Journey is a ministry where we come together and hopefully encourage one another with the light uh, of God's Word, illuminating our paths uh, as we journey together and uh, walk this, this thing called life together. And hopefully, um, I believe that you, as well as myself, want to do it that is in a way that's pleasing uh, to our Lord. So thanks for dropping by and spending some time with us. It certainly means a lot for you to give your time to this, <clears throat> and I'm glad that you've done so. Um, we do some current issues, um, and today's current issue is going to come from an article that I pulled off the web um, from Charisma Magazine, um, and we're going to look at that uh, in just a second. <clears throat> but it's written by Kenny Luck. He is the founder of Every Man's Ministry. Uh, he's the men's pastor at Saddleback Church. Sounds like he's got a lot to do. He is also um, he's uh, on the advisory board of the ChristianMingles.com, where he provides biblically oriented teaching and leadership for men and for pastors seeking who are seeking relevant timely material that battle cultural worldly concepts threatening men and threatening God's men as well um, and you can go to um, his website it's it's everymansministry.com and you can find some more information there I keep looking down that, that picture is right right below the camera here and it's hard not to look at it so I hope you enjoy it um, so anyhow <clears throat> His article, uh, and I'll put it up here in just a second, his article is titled The Deadly Deception of Sexual Atheism in the Church, um, and it is, again, on charismamag.com. Um, I thought it was interesting, sexual atheism. It certainly got my attention when I read that, and uh, I'm not going to read the whole article to you today. I'm just going to take some ex excerpts from it and uh, share it with you. So we're going to be actually talk about, that's correct, sex, and along with marriage, probably more marriage than sex, um, and I'll bet you're thinking, wow, really? Um, I'll bet you're, you're probably also thinking, it will probably be a tirade on, on uh, homosexuality or something like that. Uh, no, you can actually talk about sex and not, talk, not always be centered around the homosexuality issues. So, and uh, I guess the short answer to that would be, no, that's not, you know, we're not going to deal with that. 
Um, I'm going to read some of his points from his article here in just a second. Uh, and then I'm going to take, you know, some time out and deal with sexuality and marriage. Um, I think it's interesting, before I do that, I think it's interesting that um, probably the first time I ever preached on sex from the pulpit um, it was later in my ministry. I, I know that I have, I'm sure, but well, the one that I remember particularly was um, uh, was from a series I did on um, um, on uh, on love. And um, while I and I did it while I was pastoring in in Fayette, Iowa, I pastored there for about 13 years. And uh, one of the topics, we did several on love, and one of the topics, of course, was sex. Um, I had a creative team there, and uh, the, I would allow them to to either pick um, subjects for me to preach on or scriptures that they would like me to address, trying to get a sense for for um, from my people what they needed. And uh, sure enough, I had one of the guys on my on my creative team said, well, Pastor, I'd like you to preach on sex. Um, you know, our, our church needs to hear it. And, you know, I I breathed deeply. I won't forget, you know, I breathed deeply. I swallowed that lump that was in my throat and thought, oh, okay. <laughs> no, um, certainly not something I am comfortable with. Um, but I got to tell you, um, we promoted the, the series like we do did all of our series, um, and, and, and in most of our series are designed. Uh, when I do series um, with my creative team, there w- was designed to bring people into the church who didn't normally go to church, and so we tried to find those ways to to bridge to them. But anyhow. Um, you know, we promoted it. We put it in the paper you know, for the series and that kind of stuff. And we put a list, a schedule of the of the different topics. That and the title of the series actually was "Love Never Fails." <clears throat> and um, it was interesting that the best attended service that I had in a long time was on the week where we, I was supposed to deal with, with uh, sex. And we had lots of guests come in. I had a, one mother who brought her granddaughters, or one grandmother who brought her granddaughters and her daughters. Um, you know, and, and there's teenagers in, in um, and I was um, I was pretty apprehensive <laughs> about it. And uh, uh, but I did it, and and but it w- I guess I, what I really realized is that that people are are hungry. Christians, particularly, um, are just like the the people in the rest of the world are very hungry to know, you know, what God wants from them in this. And um, and so um, as our attendance peaked that day, you know, it was a real lesson for me. Um, it tells me that Christians are just hungry to know. And uh, if we don't deal with it from the pulpit, um, or at least in, in other venues in the church where we're teaching and discipling people, you know, um, then our members are actually uh, going to assimilate their information from other sources. And unfortunately, those, most of those sources are, you know, from the media, um, from television, um, which is a media as well, a different type of media. But, um, or, or from friends, or from the from the culture, you know, those around them, um, asking other Christians what their take is on it, which which I find is interesting, um, because there's there's when, when we're looking for information about God, there's obviously places we should go and places where we actually should start, and we don't tend to do that, and uh, so anyhow, his article is a church uh, f- a church full of sexual atheists how's about that <laughs> that's that's a mouthful isn't it and it certainly caught my uh, my attention so I'm, I'm gonna put that up here um, and this is uh, an interesting picture uh, as well but a church full of atheists and I'm just gonna read a few excerpts uh, from you I won't read I won't read the whole thing to you I think you can read it for yourself and certainly um, certainly would challenge you to do that um, this is taken from uh, charisma uh, charisma mag c h a r i s m a m a g dot com and uh, just look it up look up for this this article then and you'll find it there by Kenny luck um, and you can see his name right there. Um, and I thought it was an interesting picture. Um, I'm not sure 
you know, if there's some symbolism there, you know, with Adam and Eve kind of thing, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I dare not say. But, but I wondered about it when I looked at it. As a photographer, you, you better know I was going to be interested in it. So... Um, he, he writes, in a recent study conducted by uh, ChristianMingle.com, uh, Christian singles between the ages 18 to 59 were asked this question, would you have sex before marriage? The response was 63% of the single Christian's res, uh, res, respondents indicated yes. And he says, in my 30 years of youth and adult ministry experience, this is as unfiltered, direct, and honest as a question and answer can be. He said, it is equally honest to say that nearly 9 out of 10 self-proclaimed single Christians are in, are in practice sexual atheists. In other words, God has nothing to say to them on that subject of any consequence or at least anything meaningful enough to dissuade them from following their own course of conduct. It is the ultimate oxymoron. And, and he's right. Um, a person who at, at once believes uh, in a wise, sovereign, and loving, loving God who created them and all things um, can also believe simultaneously that he should not, cannot, or will not inform their thinking or uh, living s sexually. It reminds me of those famous red letters in Luke's Gospel where Jesus says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? And he goes on to say, there is a disconnect between identity and activity. Uh, can I encourage you to go ahead and get on and read this article? Um, and I'll, I'll certainly post a link um, to the, in, in, the, in the lower area um, it, where the information is on my YouTube, if, you, if you're getting this from my YouTube channel. If, if, if you're getting it from Facebook, then you have to go to my YouTube channel, but it, but it will be there to help you find it um, and that kind of thing. So um, I'll, I'll paste that link there for you. Well, I actually, I, I agree with uh, his concepts here and what he's saying. Um, he, he's certainly right. One, one of the nagging questions for me, and it's probably because I am a pastor, is I, I wonder if some of the current practice doesn't have more to do with the fact that there is a void of information coming from the church um, or maybe even the pulpit. You know, or is there? You know, it, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I can only know what I do or, or what pastors that I know um, that I'm in, connected with do. Um, many pastors deal with this. I don't know that we we give a steady diet of, of this subject. Probably, probably should be more than we do. Um, probably should be something that we do pretty regular, um, I would think, because there's always there's always the next generation of 13, 14, 15 year olds that are coming up and faced with this, and they're getting their information from anywhere but the church, or from the Bible, or from God. Um, I know that I'm not exactly comfortable with the subject, and yet I know I cannot ignore it if I want to help young families um, in my congregation. Um, before I read a couple different portions of scripture, and I'm going to, um, let me share some practical life experience that I have gained from walking my journey in Christ, um, regarding sex. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. Um, sex is designed by our creator, and, um, you know, he's the engineer. Think about that for a moment. Just, just think about that. He engineered it. He designed it. Okay. And secondly, remember this: he designed it to be pleasurable. 
okay uh, he didn't design this to be something that you you know you just wanted to get through kind of thing um, he designed it to be pleasurable he also designed it to be experienced in the confines of holy matrimony there's a theological word right there's some preaching for marriage that's you know but it is holy a holy marriage um, holy uh, a holy um, coming together uh, that is recognized by the church so holy matrimony um, <clears throat> It is so uniquely designed that the uh, the best description God has for it is that the two become one. Um, that, that for him, that's the best way to describe it. I was I was talking to my son-in-law, who's also a pastor at Sioux City um, in Sioux City, Iowa, and um, you know, and he's doing he's doing a series on on doctrine and what what we believe as a, as a church, and, and I commend him for it. And I just had a conversation with with uh, my my daughter um, about about what he would about what he's been dealing with when he deals with the Trinity, and the closest way to understand the Trinity, you know, one God, three persons, is to understand marriage. The two become one. You know they're they're together they're they're individuals and yet they're together um, in 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 weddings I talk about you know I talk about this concept like a violin and a bow you know they're one musical instrument but they're two pieces to the to the puzzle if you will, will. or a um, a lock and a key that is one mechanism and uh, but it has two two parts to it two totally independent parts um, you know and so we, we when we describe marriage it, it, it even God he, he says to become one and there is something quite mystical about it and uh, quite spiritual about it to be quite frank um, it, it's spiritual as well um, I have been married for um, coming on I've stopped and think about this coming on this August 39 years and I gotta tell you uh, hey fellas gals um, particularly men I think men can relate to what I'm saying or should or should take heed from it is that I am in more in love today than I was the day that we said I do when Debbie and I got married um, you know it's deeper it's richer it's uh, sweeter um, we've gone through life difficulties you know and there's just there's something to be to be said about it um, there are moments when uh, when she can still take my breath away how about that guys 39 years all right and yeah yeah and it's um, it's truer and I'm so glad that you know when the bumps came along in our relationship that that we stuck it out and uh, God helped us uh, we didn't do that without God's help um, but I'm glad we did and um, it, it's interesting that that just three days ago we were uh, in one of our morning talks we usually take the morning and talk to get talk together uh, just for a bit uh, before I get going and uh, we were talking about the days when we were in high school she's my high school sweetheart and um, I was carrying her books and um, made the comment you know that was just yesterday and yet it uh, it's it's the truth is is that we've had a lifetime of experience together already and a journey that um, we have been traveling together and been on for more than 39 years um, we dated for a, a couple years um, in high school um, so you know it's just been quite a journey um, there there are and there have been good times there have been sad times there have been hard times there's been times of mourning for us uh, where we lost you know individuals we love um, lost my father when i was 21 years old 
um, gone through those things together. She's lost uh, both of her parents have gone to be with the Lord. Um, that's been tough. Uh, she lost her, her oldest sister. We were close to her. Um, you know, that, that's been tough. You know, we, we, we go through those times, times of loss. Um, we've had children together. I have three children and um, beautiful children, proud of my kids, proud as I can be. Um, we have grandchildren together. Um, she's My wife, Debbie, is just getting ready here in, in the next week or so. My daughter's expecting her fourth child. This will um, be our eighth grandbaby, and her name is Annie Ray. And I think I've already said this in one of the other uh, other episodes. How do you not talk about your grandchildren? I have beautiful, I have eight beautiful, beautiful grandchildren. One, the eighth one I'm just about to meet, you know, in a, in, in a precious, precious way here in just next week or two. So be in prayer for Katie, my daughter. Um, but we have grandchildren together. Um, Debbie is my lover. Um, she's my friend. She's my greatest cheerleader. Uh, I've had I've had times when I have lost my my job. I had a, I had a church let me go, and um, she believed in me. I was I had talked about our oldest our youngest son at the time was in tenth grade or eleventh grade. I don't remember now. Um, he's in his thirties now, but uh, at the time I, I I thought about just getting a secular job staying with a secular job because we just bought a home and 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 doing that for my son and for her because I knew that was important to them and just lay out of ministry for a few years and then get back in and it was actually my wife and surprised me it was my wife yeah I'm lost there it was my wife who who was my cheerleader and believed in me and said no that you, you you're at your best when you're when you're helping people you know, fall in love with God and um, walk with God and that's what you do Carl and that's what you do well and that's what you really really need to do and so you know she's my my greatest cheerleader I, I don't know what I would do without her but let me let me just share with you a few things that God has to say um, I'm going to talk uh, afterwards a little bit about where you get your where you get your information. And I think that's what Kenny is struggling with when he's talking about this stuff. Um, but 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 first, let's just look at what the scriptures say, okay? Let's just take a look and at some scriptures. It's not all that God has to say. And, and I, I, I went towards marriage, to be honest with you, and less about sex. I think when you understand that sex is to be a part of marriage, um, what I really need to sell to you guys, especially you men, you know, it's marriage. It's the way to go. It's really, by God's design, a way to go. So let me let me let me get this up for you. And uh, that's the article. Let me. That's not what. Here we go. Um, here's what Malachi has to say. Um, and. Um, these are, are is is the word of God, and I'm just gonna um, <clears throat> in Malachi, uh, starting with uh, chapter two, verse thirteen. It says, um, "And what else are you doing? You cry noisily and and flood the Lord's altar with your tears because He isn't pleased with your offering and refuses to accept them. Uh, and why isn't God pleased? Great question, isn't it?" Uh, it's because he knows that each of you men, and he's talking to men, has been unfaithful to his wife you married when you were young. You promised that she would be your partner, but now you have broken that promise. See, promises are important. He talks about our character. It's part of who we are. Goes on in verse 15, he says, Didn't God create you to become like one person with your wife? And why, why did he do this? Good question. It was so you would have children and lead them to become God's people. Don't ever be unfaithful to your wife. The Lord. God, all-powerful of Israel, hates anyone who is cruel enough to divorce his wife. So take care never to be 
unfaithful. Uh, isn't that interesting? By the way, you know, that's not saying that you, you can't be tempted along the way. They're not talking about all that at all. But, but Jesus does. He, he says, if you even look at a woman lustfully, uh, you know, that you commit adultery in your heart. Um, and you don't want to be. You don't want to get to those places. And I don't think you have to. Um, if if you work on your marriage, if if you realize it's like any partnership, guys. When we when we play ball, with, football with with our buddies, you know, or basketball, you get to where you can count on them, and you work on your relationship, and you develop it, and you develop your skills. Well, marriage is the same way. And uh, what God wants for us is is huge. Well, let me. You know, enough preaching. That's that is us preachers, you know, preaching. Um, so, but, but let me go on then, um, because there's another there's another um, portion of scriptures that is very similar to this. It comes out of Proverbs. Um, Proverbs is always fun, you know. It's always instructions kind of thing. And let me just read that to you, and then we'll talk and we'll close this thing up. Um, but again, this is light for the journey. This is light from God's word as we travel this thing called life. And how we are, uh, is it matters. It, it matters. And, and Christians want to know. You want to know. You know, what is God, how does God want me to function and behave? And uh, in, in those kind of things. Um, so let me put this back up. <coughs> Excuse me. And I see that I'm too far down here for you. There we go. There you, there you have it. Okay. Um, when it's when it's all over, your body will waste away as you groan and shout. I hate advice and correction. I paid no attention to my teachers, and now I am disgraced in front of everyone. Thinking about when you get older, huh? And um, you should be faithful to your wife just as you take water from your own well. And don't be like a stream from which any woman may take a drink. Save yourself for your wife. And don't have sex. There you go. Don't have sex with other women. Be happy with the wife you married when you were young. She is beautiful and graceful, just like a deer. You should be attracted to her and stay, get this, stay deeply in love. Um, stay deeply in love. Don't go crazy over a woman who is unfaithful to her own husband. Okay? So he's talking about that. You know, the Lord sees everything and he watches us closely. And um, he, he watches us closely. Sinners are trapped and caught by their own evil deeds. They get lost and die because of their foolishness and lack of of self-control and there you have it again isn't it it's it has to do with self-control um you know be happy with your wife you married when you were young you know she's she's beautiful you know married for uh, almost 39 years and i think my wife is beautiful you know sure we look old look at this beard you know i'm and and she thinks i'm she still tells me i'm handsome um, I tell her, I laugh at her all the time, and yeah, and obviously your eyes don't work the way they used to, and uh, we laugh about it, but but it's true, and you know, and it doesn't um, it doesn't really change over time if you work on it and you develop it. Um, but but that's what isn't it interesting what the Lord has to say, um, you know, and, and He talks about that, you know, the they get lost. And think about it. When people separate, um, people who live together now, you know, and they're together for, I find it amazing, five, six, ten years. And it's a little easier to leave. Um, not, not, you know, they have children. And, and not that that's easy to leave, but there's no, there's no, there's no things in place that kind of make it hard. And I think, I think sometimes we need to have things in place that make it hard. Um, I think God wants it uh, to be that way as well. Um, so, um, if um, if you are, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about where we get our information, where we seem to be getting our information. If you're getting your, uh, if you are getting your God knowledge from the culture or the media, um, even even if the church is failing you, you you still can go to the Word. You can still learn about God from the Word. You can read. This is a tremendous. 
You know, I guess the only place it talks about the it says Bible is right here. But tremendous, tremendous a wealth of information that you can read and study and, and learn and grow and develop. And uh, <coughs> us, hey, our Sunday school teachers, they, they, they won't nobody enjoys you know it's like it's like when my kids my kids were growing up you know you sweat this and and they write comedy shows you know the half hour sitcoms you know and that's one of the subjects they go to you know when mom and dad want where mom or dad has to have that talk you know with their with their children um you know but ask a sunday school teacher ask a pastor to deal with it you know as uncomfortable as it may be it's important um but but where are you getting your your knowledge? Uh, you know, are you getting it from the culture? Are you getting it uh, from the media? Um, you looking, and if you are, you're 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 looking to really the wrong sources. If I, if I had a let me put it to you this way, if I had a a, a medical problem, I, I sure wouldn't consult my friends or the internet. I, I would go to a physician. I want to want to go to somebody who who at least went to school, who at least you know, it's been a big part of his time or her time practicing, you know, and working in it, and and who has who has, you know, got an education and and some intelligence on it. And it's not to say that the other other sources, you can't get information because obviously this is the information age. But you know, what's their background in it? Even even doctors, general physicians when you get into certain areas of the body, they'll refer us to experts. Why? Because, because, you know, those experts in that area, they just have more expertise. They, they just know more about it. They have more experience with it. And, and it just makes sense. But, but that, what doesn't make sense to me is, is when people who, um, especially, and I, I encountered it, I have some friends, you know, who are just sure that Christianity is a line. And, and, and so they go to the internet, they go here, they go there, they go anywhere but, but to church or to a pastor or, or to, um, and, and I know that in, in Christian colleges, the professors would be happy to talk to anybody about the Lord and, um, and wouldn't charge them a dime, you know? So you, you can go get somebody, you know, who really is in the know, who, who's got experience and who has, you know, who has just dealt with whatever the subject is about God. Um, you know, so I'd say if you're having a spiritual or moral struggle or problem or question, um, why, why go anywhere other than to the Bible for your answers or to the church or to a pastor or a Sunday school teacher or, or a, a Christian college professor? They're, they're happy to share Christ. They, they've committed their life to sharing Christ and studying Christ. So I, I let, let me say this to you. I want to change gears just a little bit. I'd like to challenge you to try a little experiment. Just check it out. Go to some of those old geezers like myself, or you know, and I've shared, you know, what it is for me. But, but I, I you know, go to somebody who's been married for around thirty years or more, and ask them if their life isn't richer for for making a commitment to each other. I mean, it's the only only spouse they've they've ever known, it's the only sexual partner they've ever had, and ask them if they regret it. I think you'd be surprised to find out. In fact, I I really really think you'd be. There's some out there. Uh, I'm not saying that's not that's not so. I'm sure you can find some if you look hard enough. But I think what you will discover is is that the majority of people who go that many years together will tell you. There is some blessings here that's, that you just cannot understand, and it's worth it every mile of the journey. Um, and, you, you know, I just think you'd be hard-pressed to find too many people who would say it wasn't worth it. So, let me say this. If you are single, can I tell you that God doesn't want you to just live together? I think I read some scriptures. That's not God's plan. Um, in fact, that way is actually for cowards. People are afraid to make that commitment. Make it. Um, make the marriage covenant. By not doing so, you actually cheat yourself of some of the some of life's richest, richest blessings. Let me say this to you: If you're married, you're not single, but you're married, and uh, you're struggling. Your marriage is 
struggling and you're tempted to call it quits man this is harder than I ever thought um, there are those times when it can be that way it doesn't always have to be that way I guess it really depends on how much the two of you work on it and get committed um, to, to you men I've, I've actually had some sermons uh, men don't my men don't tend to like me too much in my church uh, when they actually they love me they appreciate me but but sometimes I tell them some pretty hard stuff and I've been known to tell tell men that women by God's design will respond to them and I have been known to say you know if you don't like the way your wife is you can change that because she will respond to you God is designed uh, our wives to do that I know there are some some marriages out there where the women wear the pants if you let me get away with that expression you know where they you know and men are the it's really about passive passive and dominant you know there's in you know and and uh, and that's okay you know there's nothing wrong with that I, that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is is that sometimes the women tend to be the dominant ones you know but if you're struggling and tempted to call it quits don't Go to a pastor or find a Christian counselor and, and get some help, get some assistance to make it work. Um, but whatever you do, don't don't get your theology, don't, you know, uh, from theology is, by the way, the study of God. Don't get it from resources where, you know, um, especially resources who are spiritually and theologically bankrupt. I mean, that's just not the place to go. Well, that's enough for today. Uh, thanks for dropping by and taking the time to shed a little for us to shed a little light from God's word onto the path of our life's journey and uh, please feel free to email me or drop me a line with a question uh, you may have and do go ahead and if you if you like these and subscribe you'll get notices that when new ones come out um, so subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, if you would like to get those notices and um, I'm gonna put this picture up as I as I sign out, I just like this picture. Uh, in fact, I'll do it with my email address up here. How about I do that? And uh, there you go. And let me get my my ugly mug. Hey, by the way, how you guys like this? Huh? <laughs> it's coming along, making me look old. Anyhow, there we go. God bless you. May God cause His face to shine upon you. It may shed light on your journey.